Do you want to know more about modern professions, but are afraid of asking a silly question? We will ask all the questions to the professionals for you, and they will tell you how everything really is. Is the tooth fairy real? Uh, we have a lot of restrictions placed upon us. Well, what if I didn't take enough to, to notice a cavity starting? My name is Neki Jamal, and I'm a dentist here in Lloydminster, and I make big smiles all day. Yeah, a, a lot of people are scared to come to the dentist, but dentistry doesn't have to be that way. And I really find if, if I can just talk to people and connect with them on, on a more of a human level, I can really alleviate a lot of people's fears. But for those people that are still too scared to go to the dentist, we, uh, we can always sedate you and, and get whatever dental work needs to be done. And, and a lot of people are happy doing that as well. It's a great question. It's really, really important um, to treat baby teeth because those baby teeth can still get cavities and those cavities can turn into large infections and that infections can spread to other areas of your face. So it's, it's very, very important that you take care of your kids' teeth and you don't want them to get infected or, or become abscessed. As well, those teeth can become very, very painful as well and, and we don't want to see kids in pain. Um, I, I've had braces for about four years and, and a lot of us have to get nice straight teeth. Um, <laughs> Braces, braces don't hurt, but that they, you feel the pressure of them moving your teeth. And uh, I, I kind of liked that feeling because I knew that progress was happening and my teeth were moving in my face. And, and uh, I was, I'm so grateful that I had braces so I could have a nice smile today. So um, I think whatever minor discomfort came from braces, it was well worth the, uh, the final result. Well, I hope coffee isn't because uh, I sure drink a lot of it. But um, yeah, cigarettes, um, that's not good for your body or, or good for your mouth. And, and beyond just, you know, oral cancer and, and teeth staining, cigarettes aren't good for you at all. But um, coffee, man, I'm not going to give up coffee, so I'm not going to expect you guys to either. Well, everyone, everyone's different. The, wor the word veneer is, is basically just like a, putting a press-on fingernail on your teeth. And uh, there's, there's a lot of different situations when you would do veneers and when you wouldn't do veneers, some cosmetic, some not cosmetic. So um, seeing your dentist might actually be the best way to answer that question because uh, you need to find what situation or what, or what procedure would be best for you in that situation. So it's, uh, that's a tough question to answer. <laughs> Is the tooth fairy real? You better believe she's real and I got her cell phone number and whenever anyone loses a tooth, that's the first person I call. Well, there's, there's three parts of, to a tooth. There's the outer enamel, which is the white part of the tooth that we see. There's the sensitive part of the tooth, which is called the dentin. And then there's the life of the tooth, which is called the nerve or the pulp of the tooth. And that's the part um, that gives life to your tooth. And so that's, that's the main component of the tooth that we want to keep healthy. So I'd say that's, that's the main part of the tooth, the nerve. I think we could all floss more, including myself. But uh, yeah, we need to floss because that only keeps our gums healthy, but it helps prevent uh, cavities forming from in between our teeth. And uh, if you've, if you've you know, been to the dentist enough and had cavities just like myself, um, they usually start in between the teeth. So yeah, I need to look in a mirror in myself and, and tell myself I need to floss too, so. Yeah, that, that's, that's a, a, a really interesting question. It's, it's difficult because uh, we have a lot of restrictions placed upon us from, from Alberta Health Services and the Alberta Dental Association to keep our sterilization standards to be as strict as a hospital. And so in order to do that, we have a lot of equipment and there's a lot of um, almost procedures that we have to comply with. And so unfortunately, all these things add costs to the whole, um, to the whole situation. And not only that, we pay for our own materials and um, everything in our office. And so in order to provide you know, world-class care and the best care that's out there and the best care I would want to receive on my own mouth, um, that unfortunately um, 
there's a cost to that. And so, um, yes, of course, we want to keep costs down uh, to as low as possible, but th there are a lot of you know components that go into it. It's it's not just just a simple filling. There's there's a lot more to it. I feel very strongly about this and I, without a doubt, I, f I really feel like you should be using an electric toothbrush. Um, even on myself, there's no way I feel like I can clean my mouth as well um, without using that electric toothbrush. And, and I recommend whether you're a child or an adult, use that electric toothbrush. It just cleans everything more efficiently. And we both know you're not going to brush for, you know, the full two minutes like we ask you to. So why not have something electric in there that's cleaning everything a lot quicker than you would do on your own and a lot more efficiently. So I like the electric toothbrush. I don't think mouthwash is dangerous. Um, I think mouthwash was with a lot of alcohol in it, like, you know, the old school Listerine products, those, those can dry out your mouth and, and cause, you know, further exacerbate a, a dry mouth. But, um, you know, some of these newer mouthwashes with no alcohol in them, they can be very safe, like a Listerine Zero. Um, but also, um, there's lots of mouthwashes with fluoride in it, and that fluoride can help remineralize your teeth and, and help uh, remineralize cavities that once started. And so I would say mouthwash is, is more of a useful tool than, than dangerous. An implant. Yeah, so what an implant is, is instead of having a tooth root, you have a titanium root that you can then attach a tooth to. Um, implants have really revolutionized our profession. They allowed us to, to give back a tooth to where we couldn't physically provide a tooth before. And so um, the longevity of implants is, is really a very complex issue and it, it's just not um, asking someone how long it lasts. It depends on the individual themselves, um, how the bone looks in their mouth, how the gums are, how the bacteria is in their mouth. And so it's, uh, it's not a, a simple cut and dry issue, but the, the short answer to the question is, I want them to last as long as possible. And, um, and we will do everything we can to, to make them last as long as possible. But they do have a very good track record of working very well for a long term. Oh man, that's a great question. How many are too many? Too many are too many. <laughs> um, you want to use um, the, the least amount possible, but as much as necessary. So um, I want to flip that other que that question around and say, well, what if I didn't take enough to, to notice a cavity starting? What if we only took ones at the back and we only wanted to take two, but then we can't see the ones at the front and then we've missed cavities up front. And so, um, of course, you don't, want, you don't need to take an x-ray of every tooth, but it's really important to take the x-rays of the teeth that, that are susceptible to cavities and, uh, or other um, bone issues around your teeth. And so, um, it's, that, that's a very difficult question to ask, but of course you want to keep the number to a minimum, but you don't want to miss it. So first you have to start um, at just basic university and you have to get a bachelor degree in, uh, in usually you get a bachelor degree in science and then you have to apply to dental school. And there's, there's uh, I think there's about six dental schools in Canada. Um, I went to University of Saskatchewan, the best dental school in Canada. And uh, that's where I earned my uh, doctor of dental medicine degree. Unfortunately, dental school tuition um, is rising rapidly and that's just because we just don't get the government funding that um, other colleges may, may receive. And so um, when I was going through, it was it cost about $50,000 a year with tuition plus equipment um, to, to, make it, uh, to make it through the program. And so usually by the end of it, you're looking at about $200,000 in student loans, but uh, unfortunately, I, th I think it is still rising. Um, that's just the times, I guess. You know, it, it really, really depends. It depends where you want to live. It depends what type of patients you want to see. If, if you want to be an orthodontist and only see patients to straighten your teeth, or you want to become a surgeon and then you, you end up taking out a lot more teeth and, and working on, you know, if there's areas of trauma, um, or you become a family dentist and, and you help families and, and, you know, fix cavities and stuff. 
it's it really ranges uh, all over the place. So it can go from from uh, uh, I don't know I can't give you, I can't give you numbers, but um, it's it's the cool part about dentistry is you get to be a business owner as well, and so um, you get to have your own staff and your own team, and and you can you know see your vision and 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 make it come to reality, and so. That's actually one of my favorite parts of dentistry is, is working with my team every day and, and you know having a mission statement and, and seeing that into reality. The thing that that um, I find difficult in in the profession is is maybe the the negative connotation that dentistry has in the profession um, or or even in society because um, if if everyone only knew how much we care about people and how much we just want the best for people and and I know some people are so scared to see us but really we're just trying to help so many people. Um, I think that's the difficult part um, of the profession and uh, whenever you meet someone everyone always has to show you you know their, their bad tooth or they have to say you know their horror story about dentistry. I wish it was the other way around. I wish everyone would say man I love going to the dentist. I love my dentist. It doesn't have to be me but it doesn't matter who it is. Like, I, I just, I love the ability to, to just see people happy about our profession. The thing I like about my profession is I, I go to work every day and I know that I'm changing lives. And, and it's just one, one smile at a time. It's one tooth at a time. But, but really, like, I really feel like I make an impact every single day, whether it's giving a kid a high five or whether it's, it's giving someone a new smile. Like, it, it just, it really fills my cup and it fills my heart. Um, but to me, the best part about my profession is knowing that I have the ability to change someone's today, someone's tomorrow, and someone's forever. And um, I really feel like I have the best profession in the world because of that. So some, some dental advice would be, yeah, br brush and floss the teeth you want to keep and uh, don't forget to do your, uh, you know, your annual visits for your, for your checkups and cleanings and, and do your best and take care of those teeth because once they're gone, um, it's a lot more difficult to put back and, and I feel you may regret that.